uh, getting close to the middle of June. It's finally warming up a little bit around here. We had a uh, pretty chilly early spring. Lots of rain, so I didn't get out much. So it's been a while since I've been uh, filming anything. Sorry about that. So I've got two projects that I'm going to start this weekend. Um, I suspect they're both going to drag on a little bit because they're a little bit ambitious uh, as I haven't done either one before uh, in the way I'm going to be doing them. Uh, the first is, um, you can see this one's quite a bit bigger than the logs I've been working with in the past. Um, it's probably a little too big, maybe. Um, what I'm thinking about, or not thinking about, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to combine an arbor and a bench. So I'm going to build uh, four posts, uh, arbor with some logs going across and across the top. And then in the middle, uh, a bench with, I think, a uh, bit more of a decorative back than I did on my, uh, my deck chairs. The seat will probably be pretty similar to what I did in the deck chairs, just some slabbed wood. Um, I may try joining them with dowels, but I don't think so. I think I'm just going to leave gaps and um, uh, that way as they shrink and uh, dry, it's, uh, you don't end up with unsightly gaps you have planned ones i'm not positive on that yet obviously but that's where i'm going with uh so that's gonna be the first one um i think this is going to go to my camp uh, uh for around the fire basically um should last a few years and uh all right the second one is i found a just when i was uh YouTubing around, I found uh, something about uh, tensegrity tables, which are basically uh, tables that are like this, this little model I made kind of to wrap my head around it, uh, where the top is completely suspended by string. Uh, in this case, fishing line. So there's four fishing lines around the edge and then one in the middle. Um, this basic design, I mean, you can have three around the edge or whatever, but and you can have more than one in the middle, but the basic design is, is this for any of them. And the idea is the, the top is held up by uh, something soft, i.e. string, cable, chain, in um, tension. And then the two items here, which overlap uh, on the vertical plane, are under compression. So um, this string in the middle does all of the work of holding it up. So this one has all the weight of the top on it, plus a little bit from the tension here. These four basically just keep it from tipping over. Okay, this was just some scrap that was laying around that I tossed together one evening just to see um, if I had the idea right. And as you can see, like when the bottom is held steady, the top moves because again, it's just string. So my idea is, oh, uh, it's about, three inches thick it's fairly uniform and I thought it would make a really neat tabletop so that's kind of what I had in mind I've got another one down there for the same idea um, I don't have any I didn't have any firm plans for it but that's what I was thinking when I put that Brock down uh, I actually broke my mic cable and had to order another one so a lot of this uh, video I'm afraid is gonna have to be dubbed over like this after the fact that's all right it gives me time to think about it as I was building and uh, I'll probably shorten up a lot of what I said. So you missed my long, boring explanation of what this project is, the whole point of this video. And that's building an arbor bench. So basically a, a, a standard arbor, um, you know, garden arbor, and then I'm just going to put a bench in the middle of it. Uh, I saw some pictures of uh, uh, kind of this basic idea, the arbor bench, uh, just online. There's a, there's a few of them kicking around if you Google. I'm kind of taking a, a, some ideas from a couple of those and putting them together. I don't have any firm plan as I start this, uh, which is why it ended up taking me a couple of weeks, I think. Um, I was basically making it up as I went along. I like the end result, but uh, you'll see a couple of mistakes I made as I went along and had to, had to account for. Um, as well as just general time of thinking about it and 
uh, making measurements and stuff and trying not to make mistakes ended up taking quite a while. I'm not going to include as much of the log peeling and sanding and whatnot uh, just because it's A, boring, and B, you can see it in my other videos if you're, if you're so inclined. Suffice it to say that the majority of the time is spent uh, doing those two activities, sanding and log peeling. The actual building, once you have the, the logs done and, and you know, after the build, getting them prepped is really not that big of a deal time-wise. So let's get at it and let's build. You can see the log holder I made is not quite big enough for these size logs, or I guess a better way to put it, these logs are a little too big. Um, generally, I work with stuff that's three inches and, and smaller in diameter, uh, but for these sides and top pieces of this arbor, I want it to be big, chunky, heavy stuff. Um, so, so the log holder does do it okay, but uh, if, if I was going to be using this um, uh, regularly with this size lumber, I would definitely go with a, a, a bigger piece. This one works itself loose after a while. You'll see me retightening it as I go throughout. I'm putting two inch tenons on the end of these, and the logs are too big for my tenon cutter. So I've got to cut them down a bit with the uh, draw knife first. You can do your whole tenons with just a draw knife. Uh, there are some people who, who do that, make hand tenons, and uh, you know it's, it's an art form in and of itself. Uh, you can see the way mine is flying around here with that little log holder and the, the wire reel that I've got it attached to that you're not gonna be doing very, uh, uh, very detailed work um, with, with this. Anyway, it, it's good enough for just cutting it down uh, to a small enough size for my log holder. So I had to do this uh, numerous times throughout this build, uh, different ways I, I, I kind of cut it down a bit. I'm gonna show the, um, the whole making of this tenon end in real time. Uh, you, you'll get the idea uh, of you know, how much work is involved on, on each end. Uh, there's no need to show them all. So I'll show you these, these ones that'll, that'll represent the four um, top the the, top, the four tops of the side posts um, that the top will attach to. So like I said, I'm gonna show this uh, whole tenon in real time, so it's gonna take a little while. The later ones end up looking a little better than this one, I think, um, as I kinda got better at it. So let's, uh, let's listen to some music. Just as a side note, the uh, music comes from the uh, YouTube Studio Free Audio Bank. It's got a, a bunch of free songs in there. I've kind of been poking around in there. So this one that I really like, it's uh, it's actually a recognizable tune as opposed to just the instrumental. Um, anyway, hope you like it. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?
So you can see I was a little overly optimistic with the uh, the sizing. I was hoping that the, the tenon cutter would, would bite in and keep going, but it didn't. I got a little bit done. I have to go back and peel off some more. All right, so let's keep going at it. <laughs> You can see here my use of the draw knife is getting a little awkward looking. Uh, the reason for that is when I was, it, it, at this point when I have part of the tenant done, if I use the draw knife uh, 
properly, for lack of a better word, and uh, pull it down towards you like I was earlier, it digs into the tenon that is there. And I didn't want to be uh, taking chunks out of that or ended up undersizing the, the end of it. So that's why I'm kind of uh, awkwardly trying to shave this down enough to get the rest of the tenon done. Uh, the later tenons got a little better than this. I was experimenting here. I hadn't done one this big before. Anyway, it got better. This one was a bit of a battle. <laughs> All right, so I'm drilling out the, uh, the the last of the tenon here. I I think I had about a quarter inch to go here, if I remember right. Anyway, so I'm finally checking it. I'm surprised I didn't jump up and down at this point. That was a lot harder than it needed to be. Mostly my own fault. All right, so what we're doing here is uh, I'm marking the center line of the uh, of the log, and uh, this this is um, so I can line up uh, the the holes for the cross pieces on on both logs. Uh, I, I I'm sure in my other videos I mentioned this before. Really, the only constant you have uh, when you're working with lo uh, logs like this is the center line. Everything else is, you know, uh, different dimensions, uh, different thicknesses. Uh, it might have a bend or warp or whatever branch sticking out. So uh, the center line is really the only constant you have to measure from. There are certain times that uh, use other measurements, like from the edge. Uh, uh, for example, when I was building the back of this bench, you'll see later on, uh, it was the gap between the, the logs that was the important part uh, for visual. So I, I was kind of measuring from the edge to make sure those gaps were, uh, uh, you know, pleasing to the eye, I guess. Um, but for most of it, it's center line uh, measurements here. This is, uh, this is where I made my first, um, I don't want to call it a mistake, I, I guess. I certainly do make mistakes later on, which I'll, I'll point them out. I'm not, I'm not afraid of mistakes, especially when I'm just making something up as I go like this. Uh, this one is more of a kind of unintended choice, I guess, but more than a than a mistake. Uh, what I mean is I started out, um, when I first did this, I measured the front of the chair, to, uh, the, the seat, to be equal to the first cross member on the arbor. Um, there, the, Then I could just attach my front of my chair to that with a mortise and tendon, and then back to the uh, the arbor uprights for the back of the seat. But when I did that, it ended up with uh, uh, big gaps between the um, the cross pieces on the arbor. Um, I forget the number I had before. Uh, might have been five, and I uh, ended up adding one and making it six. Uh, you, you can count and see if my memory is right later on. But basically, the, the gaps look too big. It looked kind of funny when I when I kind of pictured what it was going to look like. So I added one more and just did the math and uh, and reduced the gaps between them and all was good. But when I did that, I didn't consider the seat. Uh, so I ended up with the front of the seat not really having a good place to go, um, which threw me off for a bit when I, when I realized what I did. And I didn't realize that until I had both sides done. Uh, so you'll see how I dealt with that uh, later on in the video. I'll uh, leave that and leave you in suspense. But I, I like the way it turned out, um, and I'm happy with it. And even if I had realized at this point what I was uh, uh, setting myself up for, up for, I don't know if I would have had a different way of doing it. Um, so anyway, it's just kind of, like I say, an unattended choice uh, that turned out okay. Anyway, so here I am. I'm just drilling out the uh, cross pieces for the, uh, the to, to join the two sides of the arbor together. Let's get at it. So that was the end of that arbor upright. Um, I did four of those to match each other. Uh, then I had to build a, or build. I had to make the uh, cross pieces. I'm not going to show you all those. Uh, they're all the same. Um, so I did a bunch of those and. That'll probably take it to the end of this, not probably, that'll definitely take us to the end of this video. Um, sorry there wasn't a whole lot of uh, actual building in this one as uh, it was kind of covering off the basics. So the next video, uh, we'll start the build. We'll put the sides together and uh, see how far we get on with that. Thanks for watching and uh, part two will be soon. Thanks. <laughs>